we can bless people. James said, out of the same mouth must not proceed blessing and cursing. Isn't that right? Because we are called not to curse, but to bless. We are called to bless. I bless you in Jesus' name. Cast all your cares upon the Lord. Cast all your cares upon the See how it can affect destiny? Are you with me? And then he said, by your words, you will be justified. And by your words, you will be condemned. Then he goes on to say, God calls those things that be not as though they were. Glory to God. James said it like this, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. We have to learn that, isn't that right? Because it's easy to just utter out words, but let's begin to practice now with the help of God being restraining our speech and if you get in a conversation where people that love to talk you must be mindful isn't that right because it may stir you up to want to just talk 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 but be mindful now because remember those words you cannot take them back they have already gone out words are like people that are employed when you send them out, when you speak, you're sending them out to work. It's very important that we understand the power of the tongue. If we use it wisely, we can bless people. James said, out of the same mouth must not proceed blessing and cursing. Isn't that right? Because we're called not to curse, but to bless. We're called to bless. I bless you in Jesus name we're called to bless we're called to bless bless your household bless your children bless your grands bless your parents uh oh bless your parents bless them <laughs> okay and then he mentions Still understanding God's intent when making mankind. He said the glory of the Lord is upon you. Understand that the glory of the Lord is upon you. Isaiah 60 says arise, shine, for thy light is come and the glory of the Lord is upon you. You know what? Since we made it to the appointed time, the glory of the Lord is on us. The glory of the Lord is on us. Are you hearing me? Yeah. Hallelujah. For the light has come. The light has come. And so since that light has come, His glory is upon each and every one of us. One of us. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Now, He said something. Since we are made in His image and we are believers, we believe in God. He says in... These signs shall follow the true believer, right? These signs shall follow them that who? In my name shall they? They shall speak with new tongues. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. And if they drink any deadly, deadly thing, it shall not harm them. Now think about this. 
how is it so easy to accept one part of that? I can speak with tongues. But in the same verse, the same thought is the things that will accompany every believer. Some people have reasoned away because it doesn't operate in their life. Say, well, you know, God deals with some people. No, this is what he said. And these signs shall follow who? Them that believe. This is a characteristic of our Father God. So every believer that has the Spirit of God in them must realize that we can bring hope and health and life to everybody that God intend for us. Isn't that right? Let's give God some praise. Hallelujah. <laughs> and then I'm bringing this to a conclusion. He said, heal the sick and disease. Elisha, when told about... Um, uh, uh, I think it was a, uh, what's her name, widow woman? It was a lady that had the, um, what was it? Uh, no, she, she had the leprosy, or somebody had leprosy. Oh, that's what, yeah, Naaman. But Elisha, this is what he said. Send him to me. He'll know that there is a prophet in Israel. Are oh, you hear what I'm saying? What he was making clear is that if there's prophets, the signs of the prophets is going to follow them. He said, they will really know. Send them to me. He, he got leprosy. Send them to me. And he'll know. Because I'll cure him. Because of the grace and the power that is upon me. He understood that, right? What are you saying, brother and sister? I'm saying that in this New Testament time, God is saying, if we're prophets, teachers, men and women of God and believers, you can expect and should expect the signs of a true believer to follow you, right? When Jesus said, go into the world and teach all nations, I wonder the thing that you might want to keep in mind is, if you're not going, you may not see any of those signs. Are you with me? But he assures that when you're preaching this gospel to somebody that needs to know that God lives, I will not only be with you, but I will confirm your word with signs following. You know, that makes me want to get excited and tell somebody about the Savior, right? Yeah. Amen. All right, I'm getting long, so let me bring this to a conclusion. Then the last thing he mentioned concerning these, there was only two, two parts that I said. One to look at, visit the, look at the ancestor, our ancestor, and then the other one was understand God's intent when making mankind. Okay, all the other things fell under these. Uh, two uh, main points. So the last thing he said under the last point that I made was the apparel of the king's children. The clothes. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Revelation talks about the righteousness of the saints or the fine linen which is considered the righteousness of the saints. Isn't that right? So it's something that was visible, right? It was something that others could see. And he talks about being full of the fruits. of Philippians mentioned being full of the fruits of righteousness. We've been made right by the blood of Christ, right? Through the grace of God. So now that we're made righteous by God, then there are fruits that come along with righteousness. Anybody still with me? All right. And... Now, I want to show you something in the Bible. Turn with me to Judges 8. This is probably the last scripture here in Judges chapter 8.
right after Joshua for those that may not know where it is All right. This is talking about getting Gideon and his success, uh, slaying kings of the Midianites. But finally, he captures, and he asks for some bread at one point where his army was weary, and uh, they uh, kind of, you know, said some things that uh, he said, "Okay, when I come back, I'm gonna deal with you." Said a couple of those, and uh, so the men of Succoth and the men of the kings uh, of uh, Zeba and Zamuna. And so when I come back, he said, "I'm gonna deal with them." All right. So after he had won some victories, he the Bible says in verse 16, and he took the elders of the city and thorns of the wilderness and briars, and with them he taught the men of Succoth. If you look up here uh, in verse five and six, you'll see why he dealt with them. And uh, yeah, or six, six and seven. And then, so now, verse 17, and he beat down the tower of Penuel and, and slew the men of the city. Then said he unto Zeba and Zalmunna, these were kings of Midian, what manner of men were they whom you slew at Tabor? And they answered, as you are, so were they. Each one resembled the children of a king. All right, that was a type of the people of God. They wore clothing like king's children. Are you with me? It was a type of the people in the New Testament when we were clothed in the righteousness of God. We was dealing with the light of God and the, and the fruit and the character of God on our lives. So that's why it's so important for us to live something. Isn't that right? Okay, now look. And, and so um, he began to show me, he said, look at Joseph. Before Joseph began to rule. Look at his life. Before Joseph understood that some great dream was going to come to pass, although he had it, he didn't know what to expect, right? But Joseph behaved himself wisely in every situation. Are you with me? So he had a reputation of living according to the faith in the God that he trusts. He had impeccable character. No, he, he wasn't elevated because there was something, uh, because just of the assignment or just because of the vision. But God had to prepare him to be the kind of leader that he wanted him to be. Uh, are you hearing what I'm saying? So he said, look at Joseph's character, the light, before he became governor over all Israel. Then he told me about David. Look at David's life when he, when he was under, uh, um, uh, under the Philistines leader at one point. And then when he was uh, under Saul, look, look, look at his life and look at what they said about David. David, David uh, uh, of all the men and the one that he was with, he behaved himself so wisely that even they took note of him and said, Man, David, David, something else. The man said, really? He ain't like us. You know, we slipping. But he lived in such a way. And even when Saul was chasing him, and he had an opportunity to do something to slay him. Ah, no, 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 I'm not going to touch. I'm not going to touch God's anointed. Saul was still trying to kill him. Are you hearing me? And any person in the natural would want to stop him, right? But David wouldn't do it, and he rendered him good for his evil. Anybody out there? And then... Saul, when he saw that David had a chance to cut his throat, to kill him, stab him, do anything he wanted, he had him, his life was in his hand, he walked away. Saul had these words to say. David stood out there in the mountain, began to say, call him, and he said, this you David, my son? He said, it's me. And he told him, by this armor bearer, 
I won't <laughs> no reflection Joe. <laughs> he said, Oh, this is not good. I got the sword to the king. You should I'm about you should never have let that happen. That's that's not good. And then he said, That's Saul. Saul said, Now I know. That you're going to be king. Why? Not because of the prophecy. But because you rewarded me good. For evil. When I deserved an evil treatment. You did me good. And now I know. You're going to be king. And somebody give God some praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord's eyes are upon every place. And finally, uh, oh, this may not be for you, but it was for me. He said, it's, it's the little, the little things. It's not the big things. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, you, 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 if somebody tip you to fornicate, you say, oh, are you crazy? I mean, you got it going, right? So you go, somebody tell you, say, yeah, man, and try to get you to steal, take something out of the store. You say, oh, you crazy. I can't do that. But he said, it's the little things. The little foxes that spoil the vine. It's the little termites that eat in the wood. Is that enough, y'all? Okay, I'm stopping. I ain't going to say no more. Come on, let's give God some praise. Hallelujah. 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 Let's stand and bless him. He's worthy. I take it to heart what God is saying. Because I know that he was speaking not only to me. And I'll do my best to heed what he's saying. And Wanda said the Lord spoke to her. We need, we need to embrace God. Are you hearing me? He's the best thing that can ever happen to us. Oh my God. Oh my God. And if you only knew how much he loved you. If you had an inkling how much he cared. Oh you'd give him your best. Hallelujah because he deserves the best. And finally I read through the book, Testament. Um, the Old and New Testament. And I remember when I read through it. First and second time. My heart went out and said, God, how could these people treat you like that? Why should the God of the whole earth have to plead with his little subjects that he made? What kind of, what's that? I made a commitment in my heart. God, and he reminds me of that. With the help of God, this is not going to be one you have to treat like that, that will treat you that way. Oh, I've slipped up over the years. But it's good when he bring me to that remembrance. Remember what you said when you were on your knees. Before you became pastor. When you were there at the altar crying out. What you wanted to be for God. How many times have we made deep heartfelt commitments to God. I want to be this. And, and trials come and beat you on the head. Or beat you in the back. Try to wear you down. But this is a new day. Ah, glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah, Jesus. Zion is calling me. And to magnify his name. To tell all the people. Of every nation that he reigns, yeah. Zion is calling me to a higher place of praise. While she's singing gently, we want to pray first of all for the audience and for the those that are watching us by way of television. We want to pray for the sick. Lord instructed me to pray for the sick. 
God wants you well today if you're listening. That's his wonderful love in nature. I don't know how long you may have been carrying conditions in your body. But I want you to know that God is a healer. He wants to heal you today. If you will look only to him, he will heal you. Nothing is too hard for God. Nothing shall be impossible with God. As you call upon him, as we begin to pray, and as God reveal conditions, if you're listening by way of TV and you hear, you have this condition, receive. You'll feel the witness that comes from the Holy Spirit. And you'll know that God's speaking to you. And you receive it and accept. And allow God's healing power to flow to you. It's for you today. Don't look at how bad you've been. Don't look at how much you've missed the mark. But make a decision in your heart today. I want to believe God. First and foremost, after salvation, He wants you healthy. He wants you whole. Father, we thank you right now. I ask now that you reveal, Lord, what you will do concerning these that are watching by way of television. Heal any, any and every condition, Father, that they may be reminded of your great love. In the name of Jesus Christ, let it be according to your word in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Praise God. Yes, and if you're not saved, if you are a sinner and you realize that you're not saved, the first thing you need to do is turn your life over to God. All of these benefits you are not entitled to, but you can be when you let Jesus into your life. Pray with us now. Yes, bow your heads. Pray and repeat after me. Father, in Jesus' name, I come to you. I realize that you sent your Son as Savior and Lord. He came to save, the sin, to save us from sin. I realize I'm a sinner now. But since he came to pay the price for my sins, I open my heart to receive him today. I repent of all those sins that I've committed over the years and my backsliding for those that are backsliding. I ask you now to receive me in your kingdom in Jesus' name and write my name in the book of life. I will serve you as you give me the strength from this day on. In Jesus' name, I thank you. Now I'm going to pray for you as I'm getting ready to pray. We're getting ready to pray for those that are sick. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for those that have just said yes to you. I ask for a witness, Lord. We take authority over the power, Lord, that rule their lives. In the strong name of Jesus, and I command every power from Satan to loose them right now. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, and let them go free now. They are no longer yours. They've made a decision for Christ. Now loose them in the name of Jesus. Let them go. And Father, I thank you, Lord, for those that are sick, that you will heal. Let the power of my Lord be great to heal the sick every kind of condition in the name of Jesus I thank you for healing back conditions oh yes Lord I thank you heal now let the let the Holy Spirit minister now to those that are suffering with back conditions chronic pain in the name of Jesus thank you Father thank you the Lord is healing pain in the back, in the joints, bursitis, arthritis, 
I hear Crohn's disease. God is healing someone from yes, Crohn's disease. He la raboshe karabanda. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Yes, and even with us here today, let's begin to thank the Lord for what He's doing. Father, we thank you. Thank you for your healing strength. God is healing someone an inner ear condition. Just touch your ear and love, just believe and receive what God is doing. He's healing the inner ear. Praise God. If somebody has a throat condition, you have a problem swallowing, and you are concerned. Feel the power and feel the presence of Jesus now. You'll feel that healing touch. God's healing you of this thing right now. Oh God, I thank you for healing. I give your name to praise. Oh glory. Somebody's having a problem with your foot. Your foot. Londo Korobosan. I believe it's your right foot. Father, I thank you for healing that foot right now. Thank you, God. Oh, glory. Glory, 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 glory. Thank you, Father. Come on, let's give God thanks. Father, I thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. There are people that are fearful of dying from the coronavirus. And it's a, a really oppressive kind of fear. But I speak to that fear today. And I take authority in the name of Jesus. I rebuke it. And over off your life for God's glory. So that you will be free to know that in him you live and move and have your being. Yeah. And you shall live and not die and declare the work of the Lord. Yeah. In the name of Jesus, you know who you are. And God is going to help you. Praise God. Oh yes, let's give God thanks. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for joining us in our broadcast. We ask you to join us on next week, uh, same time, in Jesus' precious name. God bless you.